Babono. Some people believe that the place was named after a family who lived in the area and were called Babono. Others believe that it came from the French words ba bo no which means the ridge where there is good water. This community has a rich cultural history, unforgiving terrain, over 10,000 registered voters, and a political history fit for a bedtime story. In 2011, will a female candidate unseat the incumbent? Will spice be added to the sleepy Northwest Castries constituency? Or will the promises of delivery be enough to paint Babono yellow? From adult suffrage in 1951, the constituency we now know as Babono was called Castries Northwest Babono. It was forever a stronghold of the United Workers' Party, having voted Alan Bousquet, commonly referred to as Fetty, from 1964 to 1992, spanning 33 long years. In 1997, the constituency for the first time voted the SLP's Kenneth John instead of the UWP's Dr. Michael Louis. Sadly, Kenneth John's tenure was short-lived when he died, tragically, in 1998. But Bousquet Jr. would not ride on his late father's success in that constituency. In the by-election that followed, he was rejected by the Babono electorate in favor of the SLP's Michael Gaspar. The Labour trend continued in 2001, we saw Felix Finister and the UWP's Dr. Morello Joseph win battle for the seat. Finister emerged victorious on that occasion. However, on the night of December 11, 2006, an ominous quiet took over the Finister camp, and the only one celebrating this time would be the supporters of the United Workers Party's Ezekiel Joseph. A resident of Talvin Babono and a novice in the political arena, he is also the holder of a first degree in agriculture and a master's of arts and rural development. His employment record has been wide and varied, having held such posts as extension officer with responsibility for promoting agriculture, farm manager with the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, lecturer at Foisson Bawono School, and coach of the Foisson football team to name a few. Joseph has also been affiliated with a number of social organizations including the Shamrock Sports Club and the JC's Club. The question is, why would a man with such an extensive track record in community development and agriculture dare enter St. Lucia's political arena? I was reluctant to get involved in politics and I never saw myself as a politician and I, I, I can say so. It's the influence of Sir John. When he called me and he was putting his team together, called me and told me, look, Ezekiel, I want you to come on board. And I said, Sir John, I, I, I can't see myself being involved in politics. And his words to me were, look, I want someone that when we win would not crawl but can run with the agricultural sector. And I am coming back because I'm not happy with what's happening to this country. And I want persons around me that can give support. And these were the words that influenced me to get involved in politics. He cites his proven track record as the major deciding factor which coerced Sir John into handpicking him for the 2006 election campaign. He believes that this same proven track record is what inspired nearly 3,000 voters at seven of the 10 polling stations in his constituency to cast their ballots in his favor. Joseph is of the view that that proven track record again, backed by his delivery on the majority of projects within Babono during his tenure, is now what sets him and his political opponent miles apart. Unemployment statistics for St. Lucia have been on a steady increase for the past 15 years, a situation that is not unique only to this small island state. Though collectively, Joseph says, his administration has been working exorably to reduce unemployment. His personal attempts in the background to bring investment and employment to the heart of Babono is finally bearing fruit. As a parliamentary representative, I um, welcome and appreciate Harley Quinn's commitment, despite the fact that the, the, the challenges that um, investors are faced with worldwide regarding the financial crisis. They have stuck to the commitment and they are going ahead with the project. As far as the constituency of Babono is concerned, it's an opportunity to generate employment for persons in the constituency. The Marquis Base Resort is expected to open doors to farmers of Babono 
strengthening the link between tourism and agriculture. Based on discussions that we have had this far between management and myself, um, they have given some commitment with regards to supporting the agriculture in, in supporting agriculture in Babuno, um, where they would be engaging farmers by providing them with the necessary equipment and of course um, financial support where they will be producing for the hotel specific um, vegetables. There are also more immediate endeavors to empower his people. The objective of this project is to provide residents from Babono who are interested and in wanting to be involved in small business or home where they can establish that small business. What we have realized is that we have a number of tourists passing through the Babono community and by constructing this vending booth, it will give an opportunity to persons who have the skills with regards to handicraft, persons who are interested in doing value-added products, utilizing locally grown produce, to be able to engage in these activities and of course sell to our tourists and of course to residents alike. During Ezekiel Joseph's tenure as parliamentary representative, several projects have been implemented within the constituency. Of these, many have been completed while others are near completion. Notably, there are a few projects which have not been accomplished. Are these unaccomplished projects a recipe for political mipui? Will we hear a barrage of excuses that politicians make? Or are these understandable situations that face every political party, no matter their color? We have been distracted a bit with regards to the hurricanes. Um, we are not able to accomplish that project because that project was supposed to start some two years ago. Likewise, a new wing for the Fonwaso Primary School. Um, right now, we have seen the commencement of the, the new school for Lage. What we have done, in fact, we have agreed that there's need that we are going to construct that new school on the existing location of the old the premises for the old school. We had another option was to look at identify a new area. And the area we had, I had identified was by the Lager playing field, but that will be that will be too, too costly. Consequently, the Lager Primary School was completely uprooted and moved to a temporary site less than 100 feet away. After careful consideration, engineers opted to reconstruct the new school on its original location. When the new school is completed, the old school will be transformed into a community center for residents. For us, sir, the area is much, it's a much easier proposal with regards to construction. We're looking at an area that's unoccupied and I've been promised that before the year is, end, is ended, this, this year 2011, we shall see some commencement with the new wing for the Fawasso School. So these are some of the projects that I've not been able to accomplish. I'm referring, I'm referring to major projects. Joseph wants residents of Babuno to be assured that a new cemetery will be delivered along with the completion of these two schools. But are these projects being undertaken in Babono only fueled by a looming election date? I did not do it just before elections to start implementing projects in Babono. All right? um, that approach of politicians waiting just before elections will work, to me, is not a good approach. You can't have people suffering for, for four years and one year before elections, then you start doing work for them. All right? I started working from 2007. And some of the projects, sometimes I even forget myself that I have implemented these projects. The constituency of Babono has a most challenging topography and in an effort to alleviate the plight of residents, the representative has focused on building drains, footpaths and retaining walls in areas such as Timon, Balata, Lage, Bujis, Gara, Lakwa and Debara to name a few. According to the sitting MP, in 2006 he inherited miles of roads in deplorable conditions a situation that almost forced minibus operators in his constituency to take strike action. However, the multifaceted Ezekiel dialogued with drivers in an effort to assure them that he would deliver. And deliver he did. The Alan Busca Highway will surface under my watch, right? The first road I did when I came in um, as parliamentary representative was the road from Lage to, to Bogis. That road was in a deplorable condition. In fact, the minivan drivers were planning to go on strike. And I met with them, I promised them, look, let, give me some time, let me get the resources. And I got the resources and I resurfaced that road. 
Francis Georges is a past president of the Babuno Defensive Minibus Drivers Association and a motorist who speaks on behalf of all drivers within the constituency.